Hey gang, welcome to your ninth JavaScript and the DOM tutorial and in this video I'm going to introduce you to DOM events and show you how to remove content from the DOM. Alright then, so now you know how to reach into the DOM to grab elements, how to traverse the DOM and also how to edit the content a little as well. So now I want to shift our focus over to events and by events I mean all of the juicy stuff that happens inside the browser itself, such as click events or key press events when we enter something into an input field or submit events when we submit a form, all that kind of stuff. So I guess the question is, how do we react to these events when they occur? And the answer is pretty simple. We add event listeners to the different elements that we want to listen to events on. For example, if I want to listen to events on this title right here, for example, click events, then I would attach an event listener to this element to listen for those click events. We'd also create a callback function which will fire when that event occurs, so when a user clicks on this element. So let's do that. Let's add an event listener to this H2 right here. So first of all, we need to query the DOM to grab that. It's in the book list ID. So let me copy that dude and then say var h2 is equal to document.querySelector. And then inside here, we need to pass through, first of all, this ID and then the H2 within it. Okay, so now we have a handle on this H2 and we want to add an event listener to it to listen for those click events. So the way we do that is by saying the element which you stored, then add event listener and the event we want to fire or rather listen for is a click event. Okay, so that's the first parameter in this method. The method name is add event listener and the first parameter is the click event. This could be whatever you want, like submit or key press or another event. Now, there's loads of different types of events and far too many for me to cover, but I'm going to leave this link down below so you can check out all the different kind of events you can react to. We're going to react to click events. Now, the second parameter of this add event listener function is a callback function. And this function is what is going to fire when this event happens on a page. So when someone clicks on this element, this is going to be listening for those clicks and it's going to fire this callback function to react to it. Now this callback function automatically takes through a parameter, the event parameter, and we can pass that here and you can call it what you want. I'm just calling it E. So I'm going to now console.log E and then dot target. Now target is a property on the event object and there's many other properties as well. And it's going to tell us which element was clicked. What is the target of the event? I'm also going to log to the console just the event object itself so we can browse through it. So I'll say console.log and then E. Okay, let's enter that through. And now we've added this event listener of click to this H2. So if we click it, first of all, we get the H2. Then we get the event. And we can take a look down here and there's all of these different properties on this object. So we could see, for example, the client X and the client Y. This is the position inside the browser of my mouse when I clicked it. We can also uh, see down here that the shift key was not pressed. OK, it's false. That's because I wasn't holding the shift key when I clicked it. But we could, for example, hold the shift key, uh, shift key and click it. And this will be true. And I'll demonstrate that. I'll hold the shift key, click. And this time, if I expand this and go down to shift key, you can see it's true. So we can react to these different kind of events in different ways. For example, I could check that when an event occurs, if the shift key was held down by saying E dot shift key, right? Encompass that in an if statement. If it's true, then we'll do something. If it's not true, we'll do something else. So we're reacting differently if the shift key is pressed or not when we click an element. So we also have the target which we logged to the console as well and the source element, plus loads of other things as well, which we can browse through. So that's the basics of attaching these event listeners to elements and reacting to these different events. Now we are going to react to different events as we go through this series, but I just want to jump to the JavaScript file over here, app.js, and create some more event listeners. Okay. So what I want to do now is create event listeners on these delete buttons right here, all four of them. So I'm going to have to query the DOM to grab all four of these first of all, and they're all inside these li tags and they all have a class of delete, right? So let us query the DOM for those things. I'm going to say var buttons is equal to, and it's document.query selector 
and this time all because we want all of the buttons and then we're going to pass through the path to them or the CSS selector rather so that in the book hyphen list then it's anything with a class of delete so now we have a reference to all of those inside this variable now then what I want to do is cycle through that collection and attach an event listener to each one we can't just say this btns.add event listener we can't do that because this is a collection of elements not just one single one we have to loop through them individually and add an event listener to each one so the way we do that is by turning this first of all into an array so we can use for each on it so I'll say array dot from then I'll pass in the buttons and then what I'll do is say for each and fire a function inside here and each time around we're going to take the button that we're iterating through at the time then inside what I want to do is attach an event listener to each button so I'll say button dot add event listener it's going to be a click event and then we're going to fire back a callback function when this event occurs on each button pass through the event object and inside we can react to it so what do we want to do when this button is clicked well we want to remove the li tag right if someone clicks this delete button i want to remove the li tag that that delete button is in because we're deleting that name that book right so the first thing we need to do is navigate upwards to the parent element to grab the li so let's do that first of all I'm going to create a new constant and that is going to be equal to or rather called li and then that's going to be equal to e.target first of all so it's going to grab the exact button that we click whether that's the first second third or fourth then it's going to get the parent element okay so we're going to grab the li which is associated with whichever button we click the parent element yeah so now we have a hold of that li so what do we want to do now we want to delete that li so the way we delete something in javascript is by saying first of all the parent dot remove child and then whatever child we want to remove so we want to remove this thing right here so that's why i'm passing it in this is the child we want to remove but we need to get the parent first of all so how are we going to get that well all we need to say is li dot parent node dot remove child right so we're first of all getting the parent node of this li which is the ul then what we're doing is we're saying okay from this ul i want to remove a child and the child i want to remove is this li which we created right here so if we save this now and go over to the browser we can see if we delete something that it is removed from the page so now we've successfully reacted to that click event navigated up the dom to the li and deleted it from the ul which is pretty cool right okay in this tutorial i want to show you one more thing and that is the prevent default method on the event object so say for example we want to react to some kind of event on an anchor tag a link well let's just add in a link first of all over here it doesn't really need to be anywhere specific href is equal to http uh, the net ninja.co.uk and then we'll just say something like click here close that off save it and let's view this in a browser okay so there is the anchor tag and if we click it then it's going to go to my website however what we want to do is click it do something else and prevent the browser from navigating to the website prevent its default behavior if you like because the default behavior of an anchor tag is to go to a website whichever it's linking to right so what i want to do first of all is come over to app.js and attach an event listener to this link so i'm going to say const link is equal to document dot query selector first of all then inside the query selector we want to pass through the page hyphen banner a because it's inside the page banner right here so now we have a reference to that we want to attach an event listener so let's say link dot add event listener and then we're going to attach a click event first of all and then after that we're going to use a callback function which is going to fire when this event occurs pass through the event object then what i'm going to do is say a uh, e dot prevent 
default. And this method right here on the event object is going to prevent the default action from occurring, which in this case is navigating to the other website, right? So now we can also say console.log and inside here, I'll say navigation to, and then close out of the string and then a comma and I'll say e.target and then text content or rather if we edit the text content this will work better so the net ninja so we're getting that e.target is this then the text content is this so what we're saying here is navigation to the net ninja and then we'll output another string was prevented okay so let's save this now and view it over here in a browser if i click on this no longer do I go to the external website and I get this logged to the console instead. Pretty cool, right? So that's how we attach events to different elements and listen for those events. And that's how we prevent the default behavior. We are going to be looking at events a lot more as we go through this series. This is just scratching the surface.